working in a field, blushing with poppies, her white apron berry stained, low back pain as she bends, believing if only you were card enough. She shuts eyes, becoming that Tahitian woman, eating mangoes, growing golden as a Gauguin model. She is raped in the Congo, left to die on the road in Juarez, and deserted in Denver. But she does not surrender. She does not surrender. Some women learn to fish, pierce their clear shrimp shell for bait and spend all day holding the taut line with purpose. One paints another's perception over her face, masking the fortune of her expression. Hailstones break silence. A bruised light cast off clean sky onto a kitchen table lands on her plate. Shakes between empty oyster shells, spills onto her brown face, and this small warmth somehow sets the universe straight. She plays chess using French defense against an English opening. It's blitz as they exchange knights for bishops, sacrifice pawns, and become vulnerable because no one wants to play for a draw. Three days later, she struggles in from her mind. Distance, the denial, frees her. She gives birth, weaving the colors of earth, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and a stroke of crimson for a blanket, while all night her infant's chest rises and falls like ancient civilizations rise and fall. She watches breath, knowing there is nothing more important. Working all day, ordinary, factory, fatigued at night, when she'll soak her feet in Epsom salts. Children watch her husband rub her shoulders full of salvation. Years later, she changes a solution, nurturing his body after cancer. She wants him back the way he was before. She stares out an open window at men in t-shirts, Watches muscles darken and sweat as they flex laying bricks. Small children let friends go as the wall goes up between them. Almost thirty years later, she breaks through to West Berlin, and a friend clears the drugstore shelf of American-style cosmetics. Some women grow rhododendrons and orchids, learn to differentiate between the sprouts that will bloom and the weeds that will strangle. A woman fed peasants rice in Calcutta, wanders dry streets of Anand Nagar giving dal. She gives up all other kinds of pleasure to poverty, but does not brag. Comforting hunger with heaven leaves an aftertaste of hope in her certainty. But sometimes hope turns up empty, hardened by time like a petrified rock. It becomes some fallacy of weight. She carries. Heels off, they talk money, disassemble dreams, brush back corporate cuts over espresso, lean virtues and believe, if only you were hard enough. She wants to live without a doubt, to act without hesitation, but she seeks out. Soaking her feet where wild horses drink, she is Anna the Javanese dancing in the day of God till Christ finally climbs down to undress before her. She blushes seeing him a Jew till he reaches her with commonness so holy peace spills. <laughs> A life chosen. The sucked dryness of being a mother, this feeling of rice paper thinness, 
from giving and giving and giving again. Ears curled inward like dried mushrooms from listening. Arms rubber stretched from offering comfort. Breath weak from telling and reminding. Fingers wilted like coleus from cooking and potting. Voice crackling from just one more bedtime tale. This profound exhaustion leaving nothing left to exhale. All of this is a privilege. Like the poems not written, paintings forgone, music not sung while engaged in the process of sculpting lives. If only to be replenished by drinking passionately of the warm perfumed wind, song of a blackbird, morning glory blue of the sky, quietly listening to the brilliant aria offered up by the sun-orange poppy next to steel boulders, and the hush of a blanketing surf over a deep sleep. And later, after returning, to smaller bodies shifting and shining, to tiny voices not unlike my own, I will find they are writing the poems my father frightened from me in words I never could use singing the songs that were stilled from my voice, and painting an elaborate portrait in colors I never imagined.